This video was brought to you in part by the supporters of the AMTV Patreon. Thank you. Hey there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome back to another very special video. It's time to round off a full year. For those of you who may remember, um, I started collecting Big Finish Doctor Who audios in around August of 2020, so just last year. I don't know why it had taken me so long to jump on the Big Finish bandwagon, but hey, we were all in lockdown, I needed something to listen to, and Big Finish was there. I did a video what my collection was like after four months, so I did that in December of 2020. I then followed that up with what my collection looked like after eight months, which came in April of this year. And now that we're in August 2021, it's been a full year, so the question is, what does my collection look like now? I will say in advance, there has there has obviously been changes, there's been additions, probably not as much as in the last gap, so there was definitely more change between December and April than there has been April to August, but there are still new things to see in the collection this time around. And before we get into it, please do me a big favor, leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel, especially if you're brand new, really, really helps us out. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into my big finish collection after one year. Okay, folks, so here is the big finish shelf. That's the first one. And then I've also got stuff hiding away in this shelf as well. So we've got a lot to get through, so as to waste no time, let's get into this first shelf here, shelf number one. I'll race through these, because you've seen them before, but you've got the Sirens of Time, starting with the main range of releases. Phantasmagoria, The Whispers of Terror, Land of the Dead, uh, The Fearmonger, The Marion Conspiracy, which introduces Evelyn Smythe, great companion there. The Genocide Machine, the first main range release to have the Daleks. You've got Red Dawn, The Spectre of Lanyon Moor, where Six and the Brigadier team up, Winter for the Adept, you've got the Apocalypse Element, The Fires of Vulcan, The Shadow of the Scourge, The Holy Terror, often considered to be one of the best big finish releases ever, and The Mutant Phase, that's the first 15. And then we have the 8th Doctor introduced with uh, Storm Warning, first feature Charlie Pollard, you've got The Sword of Orion, The Stones of Venice, and Minuet in Hell, which is a very uh, <laughs> very interesting release, to say the least. You have Lou Garou, Mount Werewolves, Dust Breeding, uh, Blood Tide, Project Twilight, The Eye of the Scorpion, Colditz, the first to feature um, Tracy Childs as Klein. Highly recommend that release, so good, such good story. Primeval, The One Doctor. Now we've got a slew of Eighth Doctor titles here. You've got uh, Invaders from Mars, The Chimes of Midnight, again, often considered to be one of the best Big Finish releases ever. Uh, Seasons of Fear, Embrace the Darkness, The Time of the Daleks, and Neverland. A really interesting story, really cool. Highly recommend that release. And you have Spare Parts, another high contender for best story. You have Ish. The Rapture, which is one of my favourites, lots of dance music written by Joe Lister, who was a guest on the podcast, of course, so go and listen to that. You have The Sandman, The Church and the Crown, Bang Bang A Boom, Doctor Who Does Eurovision, another favourite of mine. Jubilee, which was the inspiration for the episode Dalek, written, of course, by Robert Shearman. You have Necromantia, one people don't often like. The Dark Flame, you've got Doctor Who and the Pirates, very fun musical episode. You have Creatures of Beauty, very odd release. You've got Project Lazarus, where six and seven appear. Flip Flop, in this nice little big case there. You have Omega, the villain trilogy. Davros, one of the best Davros stories ever, no question there. And Master, again, another solid story there. You have the 50th release, Zagreus, which is a really long story. And there's some you have to listen to beforehand, which you could probably find online and stuff, but Again, really stellar story. Great one to have as your 50th release. You have The Wormery, which has Iris Wildtime. Shirtso, which uh, I've got a shout out at Davis for this one. He really got me interested in listening to this. 
and it is really good. So yeah, big recommend to shirt. So you've got the Divergent arc now. You've got the Creed of the Crowman, which introduces Kerry's, the Natural History of Fear, and you have the Twilight Kingdom. But a bit of a break from the Eighth Doctor, as we have uh, the Axis of Insanity. You have arrangements uh, for war. The Harvest, The Roof of the World, Medicinal Purposes, which has David Tennant in it. Back to the Eighth Doctor now, you've got Faith Stealer. You have The Last. You have uh, K. Droya, I think it's pronounced. And The Next Life, which sort of is a pseudo end to the Divergent arc. Again, really nice release there. Last year on this first shelf here, or on this first row, you have uh, The Juggernauts. I'm just going to put them aside for sake of ease. You have The Game, ominous title. You have uh, Dream Time. You have Catch 1782. You have Three is a Crowd. And last on the shelf, number 70, you have Unregenerate. Okay, now we move to uh, row number two, which has double stacks. So you've got the Council of Nicaea, uh, Terra Firma. Again, wonderful story featuring Davros there. You have uh, Thicker Than Water. Uh, Live 34, wonderful story, highly recommend that. Scaredy Cat, uh, you have Singularity, uh, Other Lives, uh, Peer Pressure, huh? clever titling. Night Thoughts, uh, Time Works, uh, The Kingmaker, interesting. Uh, you have The Settling in a nice big old box. Uh, something Inside, I remember that one being advertised in Doctor Who magazine. Uh, the Nowhere Place, Red, uh, The Reaping, and The Gathering, both excellent stories. Again, Joe Lister penned those. Um, Memory Lane, and you got No Man's Land, A Year of the Pig, a Circular Time, and Nocturne. And Nocturne was the last one to be released like with this style of cover, with the logo at the top there, and of course have a white spine. Because as you can see, from 93 onwards, they, they changed they changed things up again. So we will have a look at what those are. So you've got Renaissance of the Daleks by former script editor Christopher H. Bidmead. That kicks off this style of cover. Uh, ID, you have um, Exotron, Valhalla, The Wishing Beast, uh, Frozen Time, Son of the Dragon, and the aptly named 100, which of course is the 100th release in the main range. Four short stories, really cool release there. Some more Eighth Doctor with Absolution. You've got The Mind's Eye, The Girl Who Never Was, very ominous title, haven't got around to that one yet. The Bride of Peladon, uh, The Condemned, uh, The Dark Husband, The Haunting of Thomas Brewster, uh, Assassin in the Limelight, very cool story, I like that one. The Death Collectors, uh, you have The Boy That Time Forgot, uh, The Doom Would Curse, and then you have uh, Kingdom of Silver, uh, Time Reef, Brotherhood of the Daleks, 45, which celebrated Doctor Who's 45th in 2008, uh, The Rain Cloud Man, um, the Judgment of Iskar, which is also part of a new Key to Time trilogy, which is pretty fun. That one's a bit stuck. Uh, the Destroyer of Delights and the Chaos Pool. Carrying things on. You have the Magic Mousetrap, uh, Enemy of the Daleks, the Angel of Skutari, the Company of Friends, uh, Patient Zero, Paper Cuts. I had enough of them in my life. Uh, Blue Forgotten Planet, getting towards the end of this one now. So you've got a Castle of Fear, I'll put those down there. You have the Eternal Summer, uh, Plague of the Daleks, a lot of Dalek stories. You've got A Thousand Tiny Wings, which sets off a Klein trilogy. Remember her from Cold It's really cool start to a trilogy there. Continuing with Survival of the Fittest and concluding with The Architects of History. Really cool little trilogy, love the Klein character too. You have uh, City of Spires, which is the Sixth Doctor and Jamie for a trilogy, followed by The Wreck of the Titan, where you could invert the covers to have the old logo, is really nice feature there, and Legend of the Cybermen, which takes place in the land of fiction. You have Cobwebs, last few on this side, The Whispering Forest, when it focuses in, uh, The Cradle of the Snake, 
and you have Project Destiny. And last on this shelf, you have A Death in the Family, one of my favorite releases in the main range. Now I'm about to take the top, top per row off to get to these, so we kick off with a Lurkers at Sunlight's Edge. And what's that one hiding there? So you have the Demons of Red Lodge. You have the Crimes of Thomas Brewster. Uh, the Feast of Axos, familiar name there. Industrial Evolution. Hero, Heroes of Sontar. Uh, Kiss of Death. Uh, Rat Trap, which I've heard is meant to be really good. Robophobia, which has Livchenko, who you'll see a lot of later. Recorded Time and Other Stories. The Doomsday Quatrain, uh, House of Blue Fire, The Silver Turk, some more Eighth Doctor now with Mary Shelley, The Witch from the Well, and Army of Death. You have The Curse of Davros, you have The Fourth Wall, uh, you have uh, Wirren Isle, The Emerald Tiger, the Jupiter Conjunction, I was about to say the French Connection for some reason. The Butcher of Brisbane, Protect and Survive, oh great story. Black and White, the new trilogy, and Gods and Monsters, epic story that is. You have The Burning Prince, The Acker and Pulse, The Shadow Heart, A Thousand and One Nights and other stories. They like doing their anthologies around this time, Big Finish. You have the Wrong Doctors, ooh, uh, Spaceport Fear, The Seeds of War, uh, Eldrab Must Die. See, some of those titles are hard to read with the bubble text, so do forgive me. Uh, the Lady of Mercia, Prisoners of Fate, uh, Persuasion, the start of a new Klein trilogy. Love me some more Klein. Uh, you've got Starlight Robbery and Daleks Among Us. I think the first trilogy is better, but it's still good, the second one. You've got 1963, Fanfare for the Common Man. I also have this on vinyl, which I won in a competition, but the 1963 stories are really cool, because you have uh, the Space Race with the Sixth Doctor, and you have the Assassination Games, which has the Countermeasures team, which is fun. Afterlife is there. You have Antidote to Oblivion. You have the Blood of Eris. Scavenger, you have Moonflesh, and Tomb Ship, Masquerade, Breaking Bubbles, and other stories, Revenge of the Swarm, Mask of Tragedy, Signs and Wonders, and The Widow's Assassin, Masters of Earth, you have the Rani Elite with the new incarnation of the Rani, Mistfall, Equilibrium, the Entropy Plague, uh, the Defectors, Last of the Cybermen, and the Secret History, which is release number 200 in the main range, which is pretty cool. We are the Daleks, one of my favourite main range releases ever. Uh, the Warehouse, Terror of the Sontarans. Crisscross, can't resist, can I? A Planet of the Rani. You have Shield of the Jatun. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. You are the Doctor and other stories, am I? And the Waters of Amsterdam. Just some more to slide in there. So you have Aquitaine, which I can slide in. You have the Peterloo Massacre, which is heralded to be one of the best Fifth Doctor adventures ever for Big Finish, so can't wait to get round to that. And you have, and you will obey me, some master action there, which is always good. Okay, we've got ourselves uh, two more rows. This will be fun to work my way into. So you have uh, Vampire of the Mind, Master Story. You have the two masters, there you go, Master Trilogy it was, I was right. A Life of Crime. You have Fiesta of the Damned, Maker of Demons. The Memory Bank, and other stories, which is one of the last titles I had to find. Um, Order of the Daleks, Absolute Power, Quicksilver, no, not the superhero, uh, the Starmen, the Contingency Club, Zoltis, Alien Hearts and Dalek Soul when they started doing like two stories in one, which is cool, Vortex Ice and Cortex Fire, you have Shadow Planet and World Apart, 
and you have the high price of parking, we all know that feeling. You have the Blood Furnace, the Silurian Candidate, nice play on words. Time in Office, which is meant to be really good. Um, the Behemoth, the Middle, Static, which is meant to be really, really good, so I hear. Um, you have Kingdom of Lies, Ghost Walk, a Serpent in the Silver Mask, the Heliax Rift, and the Lure of the Nomad, which is the last main range release to use this style of format, because then for release 238, they would change once again. You can see in the spine, we've got the modern Doctor Who logo there. So we have a format change. So we have, to kick things off, we have Iron Bright. We have Hour of the Cybermen, which has the 80 Cybermen, which is really cool. You got Red Planets, uh, the Dispossessed, the Quantum Possibility Engine, uh, Warlock's Cross, Muse of Fire, oh for a muse, uh, the Hunting Ground, Devil in the Midst, or the Mist, uh, Black Thursday and Power Game, another two in one there, the Chameleon Empire, yes that's right, he's here, um, you've got the Monsters of Gotcroft, which is a trilogy with the character Mags from Great Show in the Galaxy, followed up by the Moons of Vulpana, and finishing off with an alien werewolf in London. Great play there. The screen's gone really bright. Sorry about that. You've got um, Memories of a Tyrant, Emissary of the Daleks, uh, Harry Houdini's War, Tartarus, this is the Black Hole, Interstitial and the Feast of Fear. You've got Warzone and Conversion, another double-hander, Blood on Santa's Claw and other stories. You have Dark Universe, uh, The Psychic Circus, Subterfuge with Winston Churchill there, amongst others. Uh, the Cry of the Vultress. You've got Scorched Earth. Uh, the Lovecraft Invasion. Okay, carrying on. You have uh, Time Apart. Then you have Thin Time and Madquake, double-hander there. You have the Flying Dutchman and Displaced, and this was the release that came out the month I started getting into Big Finish, or it was around that time, anyway. Shadow of the Daleks 1, and of course Shadow of the Daleks 2 to go with it. Getting into the last few of the main range, you have uh, Plight of the Pimpernel, and the Grey Man of the Mountain. You have Colony of Fear. You have the Blazing Hour, and last but by means not least at all, the end of the beginning. The 275th main range release, which brought it to an end. A very nice release to finish off with as well. So that is the main range, all of this, those two rows, and that top row there. It's quite the... I'm amazed I managed to get them all in a year. I haven't listened to them all, but um, we'll get there eventually. Got a few more. There's some special releases now. I have the middle part of the Exilus trilogy, Exilus Rising. I still haven't managed in a year to get the first bit and the last bit, so maybe one day. You got some... Uh, oh, no, got that first, haven't we? Uh, we've got the Maltese Penguin, which is a fun little release with Frobisher. Now, some numbered specials. So, number one is Real Time, which is an adaptation of the webcast. Uh, special release number two is Sharda, but with the Eighth Doctor instead of the Fourth. Special release number three is Her Final Flight. Special release number four is Cryptobiosis. And special release number five is Return of the Daleks. Alright, so again the top row has been removed so we can get to this one. We have more special releases with Return to the Web Planet and Return of the Crotons, who, who thought they'd come back. An Earthly Child, that's right, you heard it, Night of the Stormcrow, and Trial of the Valyard, which was actually a really fun release. I'd highly recommend this one, especially if you're a Trial of the Time Lord fan. Now we are on to the box sets. I try and put these in Doctor order, if you like. So the first Doctor, as played by David Bradley here, I've got the uh, first Doctor Adventures Volume 1. You stay out of it. And we've got the First Doctor Adventures Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4, which has returned Scar, a wonderful story, and the recently released Volume 5, two good stories on there as well. Um, I'm on to the Third Doctor now, so we've got uh, the Third Doctor Adventures Volume 1, the Third Doctor Adventures Volume 2, and the Third Doctor Adventures Volume 7. I haven't had a chance to get the uh, ones in the middle yet, but Volume 7 
is so good, the two stories on here, I'd recommend both of these entirely. Uh, the first one, the Unzal Incursion, is very Season 7-esque, so big big ups for me there. Um, we have The Sixth Doctor and Perry, Volume 1. Don't know if they're going to make another. You've got The uh, New Adventures of the Seventh Doctor, Volume 1. Hopefully they'll make a second. I've heard it's really good. Now we've got some Eighth Doctor stuff. So we're back to individual CDs because this is the Eighth Doctor and Lucy Miller stuff. This is probably the main addition to the collection in the last four months. So with Series 1, I've got Blood of the Daleks Part 1 and Part 2. And that continues with Horror of Glam Rock, uh, Immortal Beloved, Phobos, No More Lies, Human Resources Part 1, and Human Resources Part 2. Then this box set, which you've seen before, but this is the further adventures of Lucy Miller, and I've learned that this does take place between uh, Series 1 and 2 with these guys. Haven't listened to it yet, but I do aim to. Oh, Sheridan Smith is fantastic with Paul McGann. Got Series 2, so we've got Dead London. We have Max Warp, a Top Gear pastiche. We have Brave New Town. And this is where I'm up to, the Skull of Sobek in my listening, so I will uh, get round to finishing that off. We have Grand Theft Cosmos. The Zygon Who Fell to Earth. You have Sisters of the Flame. And The Vengeance of Morbius, cool title. And I've also got Series 3, so we've got Orbis. We've got Hot House. The Beast of Orlock. We're in Dawn. The Scapegoat. The Cannibalists. The Eight Truths. And also World Wide Web. Now, I am missing Series 4. Haven't got around Series 4. I haven't seen, like, a good deal for it recently. Um, so that, you know, if I see a good deal, I'll come around to getting it. But I also want to listen to these first. So it might take some time before you see that. And we also have the box sets now. We've got Dark Eyes, one of the best finish, uh, big finish box sets, no doubt. Great 8th Doctor box set really took him in this new direction. Big fan of that. They made the sequel, which is Dark Eyes 2. Some good stories, but I, I, I like a lot of people, I think Dark Eyes should have remained just a singular box set. But hey-ho. Uh, of course, then you would expect Dark Eyes 3. You really have the Alex McQueen master who's glorious. Okay, I'm on my belly for this. So you've got, um, where is it? There, you've got Dark Eyes 4, which really rounds that off. Some more box sets now. You have the Doom Coalition series, so Doom Coalition 1, which introduces the Eleven there, played by Mark Bonnar. We're going to see a bit more of him. You'll see Doom Coalition 2, which of course has River Song, who features. Doom Coalition 3, <laughs> there she is again. And Doom Coalition 4, where she also pops up. Yeah, nice little series there. Do prefer Dark Eyes myself. New series with Ravenous, you have Ravenous 1, of course then followed by Ravenous 2, and swiftly followed by Ravenous 3, and then concluded with Ravenous 4. Then the latest 8th Doctor series, which is still ongoing at this point, is Stranded. So you have Stranded 1, which was an interesting release, and Stranded 2, which I really enjoyed. I listened to it recently, so here's for more Stranded adventures. More 8th Doctor action is in the Time War. So you've got the 8th Doctor, Time War 1, Bliss is an amazing companion. Time War 2 for the 8th Doctor. Time War 3, which has the War Valyard. And Time War 4, wonderful box set with Davros featuring too. Now we've actually got some War Doctor stuff. This is the one of the newest ones, of course, which is The War Doctor Begins Forged in Fire with the wonderful Jonathan Carley voicing a younger War Doctor. Excellent set. Highly recommend that, especially if you like your War Doctor. Speaking of the man himself, we've got John Hurt when he was around, who has only the monstrous. All four of his sets, by the way, are top dollar, in my opinion. You have Infernal Devices there. And last on this shelf, you have Agents of Chaos. So that is uh, this row, and indeed that whole first shelf. So that, as you can see, is the entire first shelf which is mainly the main range of releases plus a fair amount of box sets but now we'll pan on over here and we'll get into the second shelf okay so starting up here we have classic doctors new monsters uh, volume one there we've got some dalek empire this is a uh, series two i got this off a friend and viewer of the channel ryan thank you ryan so you got a Dalek War 2.1, I can't read the individual titles, sorry, 2.2 there, 2.3, and 2.4. I do need the others as well, that's when I'll properly start listening to it. 
Then you've got the wonderful I Davros series. I highly recommend this to anyone. This is a great uh, four part series here. So this is part one, that's Innocence. And then you have Purity, followed by Corruption. And then finally, Guilt. Wonderful four part series. Big recommend that you listen to our Davros there. Now here we've got a long bunch of uh, Bernice Summerfield there and I won't go into details of everyone but there is Oh No It Isn't which was the very first. Uh, you've got Beyond the Sun, I didn't really rate that one too much. You've got Walking to Babylon, you have Birthright, you have Just War, uh, Dragons, is that Dragons Wrath? Dragons Wrath and then you've got basically all of series two to series six, this was a big, 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 big bundle I got last year, so you would have seen this, where it was series one to six for a very good price, so happy to have all of that there. I also have this, it's not Doctor Who, but it is Big Finish. This is uh, Love Songs for the Shy and Cynical, which is a collection of uh, short stories by Robert Shearman, the writer of uh, The Holy Terror, Jubilee, The Chimes of Midnight, some of the best Big Finish work, so very excited to listen to that. I also have this, you would have seen it before, it's the Captain Scarlet and the Mr. Ron's 50th anniversary box set. I got that for the equivalent of about £3 in a sale, so very happy to have that. Can't wait to delve into it. Down here now, we've got Companion Chronicles, and my uh, list of these has greatly expanded. Um, I don't know if it was since last time, but it has expanded. I've got the whole first series, so Frostfire, uh, Fear of the Daleks, the Bluetooth, and The Beautiful People, so that's series one. Also got series two, so Mother Russia, uh, Helicon Prime, Old Soldiers, and The Catalyst. And then you got some odd titles. Uh, so I have The Doll of Death, this is just everything else I have. Empathy Games, uh, you have The Transit of Venus, The Drowned World, uh, The Glorious Revolution, Ringpool World, Bernice Summerfield and the Criminal Code, Shadow of the Past, uh, Night's Black a Agents, I'm about to say Angels then, uh, The Forbidden Time, uh, The Cold Equations, Tales from the Vault, The Memory Cheats, uh, The Sa the Selachian Gambit, I think I'm pronouncing that incorrectly maybe, uh, The Child, and you've got uh, some more over here. Sorry about the reflection, by the way. The Beginning, really interesting story there. Uh, you have The Sleeping City, Second Chances. Oh, and now we've got the box set versions of the Companion Chronicles. So I've got the First Doctor Volume 1. We have the First Doctor Volume 2. And the First Doctor Volume 3 as well. I also have the Second Doctor Volume 1 and the Second Doctor Volume 2, and I believe there's a Volume 3 coming out pretty soon. I also have this cool thing, this is a Doctor Who, the Companion Chronicles, the special, so uh, it has the three companions, the Mists of Time, and uh, Freak Show, which features uh, the Brigadier, Polly, uh, Joe's on there, Turlo's on there, and I think that's meant to be Thomas Brewster, not too familiar with that character yet, but I think that's him. I also have um, some early adventures, so I have the Sontarans, I, and I have uh, Daughter of the Gods, which is a wonderful release with the first and second Doctors there. And of course, the seventh run of those stories are coming out soon. I have The Toy, which was a special release originally with the Complete History series of books, which I use for my viewing figure series. I think it was part of the subscription that you get that eventually. And it's actually a really quite fun story, so I'd recommend it. We've got the Lost Stories range now. I have the Complete uh, Series 1 on CD. So I've got the Nightmare Fair, great story there. A Mission to Magnus, Leviathan, The Hollows of Time, Paradise Five, uh, Point of Entry, uh, The Song of Megatra, and The Macross. That's all of Series 1. I also have uh, the second Doctor box set, which is part Series 2, which has uh, Prison in Space, which I've heard lots of uh, interesting things about, as well as the Dalek pilot. I'm sadly missing the first Doctor box set at the minute, would love to have that eventually. I do have the fourth Doctor box set here, which has the Foe from the Future and the Vault, the Valley, sorry, of Death. Cool titles there. 
Um, I also have from Series 3, a Guardians of Prophecy, which was a random part of a bundle I got. So I would love more Lost Stories, though. I think it's a fantastic range. I've got the first volume of Philip Pinchcliffe Presents, which has the Ghost of uh, Gralstead and the Devil's Armada in a big, chunky box set that's very expensive to buy these days. And I've got one of the stage plays. I have Curse of the Daleks. Would love to eventually have um, the other two, which is the Seven Keys to Doomsday and also the Ultimate Adventure. Now we move down to this, the last uh, section of two rows there. There was also this on top, I need to find more space for it, but it's continuing the War Doctor stuff here with uh, Casualties of War, which was the final box set to feature John Hurt before he sadly passed. We also have this, the first Ninth Doctor box set, Ravagers, with the, with the great Christopher Eccleston. Really excited when this box set uh, was announced, and it's a really cracking set as well, I think at least. I know some people don't find it as such, but I really enjoy it, so I'd recommend Ravagers. Got some Tenth Doctor stuff, of course, some David Tennant. We've got the Tenth Doctor and River Song. I haven't delved into this yet. I do wonder how it's going to play in the whole chronology of things, but glad to have it. I also have the Out of Time releases, so Out of Time 1, where David Tennant teamed up with Tom Baker to fight the Daleks, and Out of Time 2, The Gates of Hell, where he teamed up with the Fifth Doctor to fight the Cybermen. Both really cool stories. Looking forward to Out of Time 3, which will come out sometime next year, I think. Then up here, more Tenth Doctor. I have the Tenth Doctor Chronicles, in which he's voiced by Jacob Dudman. Fun selection of stories there. I have, um, oops, slide that back, the Dalek Protocol, which is the prequel to the Dalek Universe series featuring Tom Baker. Uh, speaking of, Dalek Universe 1, this is hands down one of the best big finish sets of 2021. Such good stories, so well written, so brilliantly performed by the lead cast. Uh, Anya Kingdom there, Jane Slavin, I did interview for AMTV Radio last season, so definitely check out our chat, she's so wonderful to talk with. And at the time of recording this, Dalek Universe 2 on CD is on its way to me, which is also a great box set. I also have the 12th Doctor Chronicles, in which, again, the 12th Doctor is voiced by Jacob Dudman. Volume 2 has just been announced. I actually really enjoyed this set, and I will be picking up Volume 2, especially for some 12th Doctor action. Now we've got the War Master, who has some of the best stories in all of Big Finish. Uh, Only the Good was the first. And then you have the Master of Callus, which was a bit different, but I liked it. You've got the Rage of the Time Lord, which has Paul McGann pop up. You have Anti-Genesis, one of the best concepts, I think, for a big finish set ever. Then Volume 5 is Hearts of Darkness, which again has Paul McGann. And Volume 6, Killing Time, has recently come out. Another wonderful box set, and that will be making its way to my shelf pretty soon, hopefully. Moving on to some Time War action. This is the Gallifrey series, so Gallifrey Time War Volume 1, Gallifrey Time War Volume 2, Gallifrey Time War Volume 3 and Gallifrey Time War Volume 4. I would love to get the original Gallifrey series. I did really enjoy the Time War stuff. This was always a surprise, Susan's War. I've said this before, a lot of people didn't think much of it. I really love this. I, I would actually recommend Susan's War to a lot of people. Got some Diary of River Song. I'm still missing Volumes 1, 2, and 3. That hasn't changed, uh, and I feel I need to listen to them in order, but I have got Volume 4 with Tom Baker, Volume 5 with the various masters, Volume 6 with various companions, Volume 7, and Volume 8, and of course Volume 9 in which she's interacting with Unit will be coming out soon. Also have uh, this Master with Eric Roberts, this was a 2021 release, really cool set. He's so cool, isn't he, as the Master, I really enjoyed that. Got some Missy as well, I've got Missy Volume 1 and Missy Volume 2, Volume 3 with the Monk is out later this year. Um, slightly controversial figure, of course, uh, but this is The Lies of Captain Jack. I've got Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. Had those for almost a year now. Okie dokie, last row, here we go. So, we have Rose Tyler, The Dimension Cannon. Really cool release, recommend that. Donna Noble Kidnapped, really fun. And we have The Lone Centurion, which was a big surprise for me. I did not expect to like this, but I really did enjoy it. I have the first series of Jago and Lightfoot. I haven't got around to listening to it yet, but I've, a lot of people like this series. Lady Christina, Volume 1, waiting for Volume 2 to arrive at my house. Got Jenny as well, the Doctor's Daughter, who's having a second box set soon. Tales of New Earth, a very questionable set why they released it, but hey, it's here. And then we have The Churchill Years, Volume 1 and The Churchill Years, Volume 2. You've got the first series of the new adventures of Bernice Summerfield, haven't got round to the others yet. A Unit Dominion, which is a great set with uh, Klein and the McQueen Master, what more could you want? Really fun set. 
and we've got a fair spate of units. So we've got unit uh, volume one, extinction. We've got unit volume two, uh, shutdown. We've got unit volume three, silenced. Volume four is assembled. Volume five is encounters. Volume six is cyber reality. Volume seven is revisitations. And volume eight is incursions. And of course they are doing, well, it's a ninth set, but it's called Unit Nemesis. That'll be coming out soon. Need to get around to this series. Apparently it's very good. And lastly, we've got some special releases just behind some minifigures there. So you've got the 10th Doctor Adventures Volume 1 Limited Edition, Volume 2 Limited Edition, and Volume 3 Limited Edition. So nice to have all three of those standing tall up there, as well as these over here. So you would have seen some of these before. The Legacy of Time, which was 20 years of big finish. Amazingly got that for some daft like £20. Got Masterful, which is the 50th anniversary Master Story. Really great script written by James Goss for that one. You've got The Last Adventure, you've got The Light at the End, which was the uh, 50th anniversary story Big Finish put out, which I did used to own on CD, but I gave that away. And then I've also got, uh, funnily enough, the um, novel adventures in limited edition, or four of them at least, they did two of these. So volume one is uh, The English Way of Death and the Romance of Crime, and volume two is Damaged Goods and the Well-Mannered War. And of course, Damaged Goods, for those who don't know, was written by... Russell T Davies way before he became showrunner so I'm very excited to listen to that but yeah it's just nice to have those displayed there like you know with the various selection of Daleks and all the other figures up there but that in a nutshell folks is my entire Big Finish collection after one year we've definitely made waves with it you know coming into this quite late as a Big Finish fan I feel I've managed to amass a decent collection very happy I've been able to complete the main range very happy I've been able to grab so many of these wonderful box sets I've often got them in sales or in bundles for a really good price and hopefully as the years go on you know I'm, I'm converted well, I didn't need much converting but I am a full-on Big Finish fan I look forward to all their future releases Doctor Who related and I'm sure the collection will grow even higher and that was everything my entire Big finish collection after one year of collecting. I think I've done all right. I really think I've done all right. If you guys want to collect, obviously, you know, be be savvy with your money. It can be a big investment. I've tried to be as savvy as possible. So, you know, looking for uh, when sales have been on, looking for good deals on places like eBay and Facebook Marketplace. I actually did a sort of tips and tricks video some time ago, about um, February, March, I think, just giving my advice, what I've learned along the way of collecting Big Finish Audio, some of the best, the best possible ways to get some of the more elusive box sets. But yeah, use secondhand places. Don't be afraid to negotiate uh, lower prices with the sellers. There's so many ways that you can get so much Big Finish for affordable prices. But yeah, I'm very happy with my collection after a year. I don't know whether I'll do another update, you know, I, I sort of did those videos, I wanted to show off how the collection was every every third of the year. Um, so now that I've done a full year, maybe I'll do occasional Big Finish updates, but I don't, it's not going to be every four months, you know, unless you guys request it, maybe. But thank you very much for watching, as always, please leave a like, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, have you recently started collecting Big Finish as well, or have you been a long time collector since the early days? Let me know in those comments. I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Please subscribe to the channel, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.